Hello again sports fans, this is the second test of my new ProTrack antenna array. I'll be using the Texumo once again, but I've made a couple of tweaks to see if I can improve the performance. I've added a filter to the power supply lines for the video transmitter on the Texumo and I've changed the uh, antenna and I've also changed the omnidirectional antenna on the ProTrack. So it's a lovely sunny day, the winds are light and they're from the southeast. So uh, we throw the Texamo up and everything goes okay. I'll do a quick test of the autopilot and return to home seems to be working and stabilise seems to be working. So I set a course um, in a different direction this time. I've been going out to the northeast and having troubles at around about four kilometres. At this time I'm heading out to the southeast and I'll be following the uh, river valley. So this is the on-screen display that I'm looking at. We've got altitude on the right in the middle and speed on the left. They're the main uh, things that I pay attention to as well as the voltage and current up in the top left hand corner. We're coming up on a kilometre and I'm climbing up to around 200 metres. And so far the video has been okay. I've set the vertical alignment of the ProTrack antenna array to somewhere between 20 and 30 degrees and I intend uh, maintaining a lower altitude for this flight than for the previous tip. I've also decided that I won't be adjusting the vertical alignment during the flight. So we're just coming up on uh, 1.5 kilometres and I'm at my 200 metres of altitude and so far the video is okay. And I decide to um, take the text demo down a little bit lower to see how it affects the video. And it doesn't take long before the video does start to break up and eventually the uh, signal goes completely and the ProTrack array starts to rotate. It does reacquire the signal after uh, one 360 degree rotation but then it loses it again fairly quickly and seems to have trouble getting it back. It goes through a couple of rotations, of course during which I'm actually blind. So when the video eventually comes back I notice that I've drifted a fair bit west of my course and I also noticed that I've put on an extra 50 metres of altitude. Uh, I noticed, also noticed that I'm passing over a low ridge and I start to turn back towards the river. And uh, the video stays good while I'm doing it, so I go back on the original course and uh, carry on. So I'm gradually letting the Texumo drop back towards the 200 metre altitude that I'm trying to maintain. So we're just passing three kilometres here and I'm uh, at about 220. I didn't notice it at the time but now that I'm looking at the onboard video I can see that the uh, RSSI actually starts to drop down significantly which is really unusual for the EDUHF system I use, particularly at this distance. So I don't notice any problems until we start coming up on four kilometres and then the video signal drops out and the array starts rotating. So once again I'm blind but I can see from the onboard video that the Texumo starts slipping in and out of failsafe mode which is set to increase the throttle to 50% and return to home. So at some point here I would have flicked the transmitter into return to home mode but it's um, not having any effect yet. So you can hear the throttle drop back down to my standard cruising level which uh, indicates to me that I now have radio control of the plane again but I don't uh, have video yet. So I'm guessing it's this ridge that I'm coming up to that was blocking both the radio and the video and uh, it's still blocking the video. 
So needless to say, at this point, I'm getting a bit nervous and I'm wondering whether the Texino is still in the air. The uh, Protract array is still circling and I'm not really even catching glimpses, so uh, I'm just not sure what's going on at this point. So eventually the video comes good briefly enough to let me know that the plane's still in the air and I feed in a little bit of extra throttle just to be on the safe side. So the video is still very scratchy, I'm getting enough glimpses to know that I'm still up in the air but I'm, I've got no idea what the altitude or the distance is. I'm entirely dependent on the autopilot to do its job, which it's been doing very well. So around about here the video signal improves uh, to the extent that I see I should have a nice clear run home and I'm not expecting any more significant outages from here. So from here I'm just over two kilometres from home, I've got plenty of battery which is unusual for me and I'm up at around the 200 metre mark so I'm expecting everything to go smoothly from here but I still get a couple of glitches from the, uh, the video which surprises me. So from here the uh, video signal stabilises at uh, one and a half kilometres and I don't have any more problems uh, with the rest of the trip. I'm still a bit drained from all the excitement so I let the return home bring it home at the original altitude and uh, don't bother flying it down until I get home. I've even got enough gas in the tank to do a, a few circuits of the field just to see uh, how the uh, ProTrack maintains uh, video in close. So the performance around the field has been really solid, I'm quite uh, pleasantly surprised after the uh, problems with the rest of the flight. I suspect it's due to the increased height of the uh, Aonway uh, antenna I've put on to the uh, diversity kit, which is a lot higher than the uh, TBS Triumph I had on previously, and I was getting some problems with that. So the video is solid enough for me to actually have enough confidence to uh, 
do the landing from the screen rather than walking out to the uh, strip. It's a bit short, but I'll take it. So, although the overall result was disappointing, I think there's some positives I can take away from it. The uh, line filter I put in the video certainly helped. The uh, video has a lot less flickering in it. And I think the taller Omni antenna certainly helped for the enclosed stuff. As far as the main part of the flight's concerned, I'm pretty sure I was flying too low and in a really bad direction to cross those ridges. They were definitely interfering with the video and even the uh, UHF radio was blocked by them. So. I think that's more of the fault of the pilot and the terrain rather than the antenna. The other thing I think is that I have the antenna angled probably a bit too high and, and because I was flying low I was flying under the beam so they're probably the things I'll change on the next uh, attempt. See you then.